to Trolls. Yes, we are definitely on. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Culture of Gaming's Power Up Podcast, episode 39, audio only due to some like technical issues and whatnot. But nonetheless, we press on. I am joined by two lovely guests today. Uh, Andrew will be joining us in a little bit. Uh, he got a little bit extended for things beyond his control, but you know what? It's all fine. I'm here with who I got right now. First person up is Joel. How you doing, Joel? Hey, guys. I'm doing perfectly fine. Uh, you know, hoping, uni, writing, trying to balance life, but kind of failing at the same time, so same old, same old. Yeah, it's all good. All right, and then, uh, so Joel, what you been, what you been doing this past week? Uh, anything for the site, doing some gaming, what's been going on with you? Uh, pretty much that. I recently did a Paladins, uh, article. It's my opinion on the latest released champ, which is Dredge, the Admiral of the Abyss. Go check it out when you guys have the time. I put in a lot of effort into researching like the actual strategies and trying to see how how well this champion is. And so, yeah, I, I just saw I did not screw up anywhere. And ho hopefully it is correct. <laughs> hopefully okay. my opinion is correct. <laughs> has it gone published? Has it been sent out yet or is it yet to be uh, published? Yeah, it has, been, it has been published. It has been published. It's okay. on the website. All right, so yeah, head on over to cultureofgaming.com to check that out by Joel. And then my other guest is, of course, Mike. Soul, how are you? It figures that after so long, when I go ahead and finally get to rejoin you guys, that's the time when we don't have the videos so that people don't know who, right, what I look like. But anyway, I though. Know. Yeah. Oh, no, I no, know. No, 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 no. But, um, okay. you know, sarcasm aside, though, I'm always happy to be able to join you guys whenever I get the chance to do um, the podcast with you guys. So. I'm thrilled to be here. Can't wait to start discussing all the fun little goodies that we have uh, planned for today. Yeah. So, uh, what you been doing past week? Gaming for the site, and whatnot? Just trying to run me through that. Uh, let's see. It's kind of mixed around right now because, for the most part, it's basically been stalling for time for what's going to be coming up uh, later on this year. That you know, yeah, I'm looking forward to Smash Ultimate and looking forward to Red Dead Two and the Kingdom Hearts 3 and so many other miscellaneous games you could say. But if we were to go to pinpoint a specific game looking forward to right now, it's going to be uh, this Friday's Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Can't wait to get that going. Oh, is it dropping that soon, this Friday? Yeah, the uh, 5th of October, if I recall correctly. Okay. Oh, man, uh, okay. I think that it's like right around the corner. So, yeah, no, definitely looking forward to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Love each and every game, even Origins, <laughs> when they switch things around. And, you know, like I said, that's, I'm a huge fan of the Assassin's Creed series, so I can't wait to get my hands on Odyssey and get that going. Yeah. Wait, that's the that's the Spartan one, right? Yeah, the one it's the yeah. uh, one set in Greece. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, 5th of October. 5th of October. I just searched it out, so yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, outside of that, though, um, in regards to things I've been working on, it kind of jumps around between one to the next. So for the moment, it's kind of been jumping in between Smash articles and Overwatch articles with the latest set of articles being um, covering the rework of Torbjörn, and also uh, fun little speculation and leaked information for the Halloween event. That's, oh, that's... going to be coming out here pretty quick. That's always interesting. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, what prop do you have? What prop do you have today? Uh, we obviously can't I mean, see it, but... Or I... To be perfectly honest, I didn't really set anything up this time, but okay. I'm sure that if I was talking about Assassin's Creed, I probably would have had the the cane or the hidden blades. I mean, I was also at a Spirit Hall I mean, the Spirit Halloween store, and they also have like a whole bunch of miscellaneous stuff for Assassin's I, Creed too. And I was like, man, I want to get some of these, but it's like it's one part that they're not as good of quality, and another part where it's like, well, I got it the last year, so I don't need to get it again. So okay. Fair enough. I could just imagine that you have this whole like costume, like a uniform that you cosplay as Altair or any of the assassins. Ezio. No, no, just, it's Ezio. Oh, Ezio. Oh, okay, Ezio. Yeah. And then you're just like so pumped to show the rest of us, but then like it's all. <laughs> oh no! I, yeah, no. Trust me. <laughs> Assassin's Creed Two, much like the white popular belief, you know, everyone says Assassin's Creed Two is the best, and it's for a good reason. But no, yeah, no. I just love the costume, and I. Go ahead and have them like two hidden blades, and I walk around with the king. And it's like it's uh, so much fun to do when at the Comic Con, even if it's you know again, it's a Spirit Halloween costume. 
it's good, but it's like, you know, I kind of feel like I'm cheating compared to everyone else who makes their own costumes. Eh, I don't know, so, cosplay is still cosplay. No, no, I know that's the case, but still, it's like, you know, you're taking, I mean, you're technically just taking a bit of a sidestep by just buying the costume that anyone else could buy if they have enough money, so. I mean, mind you, I would like to make my own armor or own uh, outfits sooner or later in the future. It's that one I need more time to do it into it. I need to learn how to do it, so. And, yeah, no, it's like nobody got time for that. All right. <laughs> oh, no, well, I need to make time for that. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I just don't have enough time for that. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. All right, so let's see this past week for me. I've not been doing any sort of, even though it's like I have a PS4 or a Switch, I just have not been doing any sort of gaming, really, since my PC has gone to bed briefly. So, yeah, I'm still waiting on getting that fixed. And, yeah, I've just been busy working on a bunch of site stuff the past week. Been working on the mobile version of our site just a little bit for COG. Uh, been trying to get at least two articles out per week, one for the anime section, one for the tat section as well. As well as trying to plan out CES coverage and everything. Because it looks like we're covering that this year. So, oh, lovely. In person, because like, I'm actually going to the convention. So. Oh, congrats. Okay, yeah, nice. Thank you. So, yeah, just uh, working on doing that plan and everything. And then, yeah, Anthony is on a sort of, like, vacation right now. And then, as I mentioned earlier, Andrew will probably be joining us at some point during the show. Anyway, past that, uh, let's see, I gotta talk about some social media stuff. We have a Facebook community group, both for Culture of Gaming and, of course, the Power Up Podcast. Facebook.com slash Culture of Gaming and Facebook.com slash Power Pod. Those are the two groups. We have a community Discord that you can find an invite to on the main site, which is, of course, CultureofGaming.com. Just one click and you'll automatically join the server. And then you can chat to everyone that is on the show right now as well as will be on the show so yeah if you want to talk to us about whatever go ahead and do that and then we of course have a twitter that is twitter.com slash at cog.net instagram um at culture of gaming youtube we don't have a cool youtube custom url yet so if you want to help us reach 100 subscribers on our youtube channel we can finally get an awesome custom url we actually have a myspace page for the power up podcast myspace.com slash power pod <laughs> Oh, I can't get over the fact that that is such that is such a meme. <laughs> Every single time I hear that, just, yeah. Hey, we got MySpace, guys. <laughs> uh, sorry, what? what so it's like, what do you even do on MySpace? Do you fo You don't follow, do you? You listen to no music, idea. I think, if I recall that correctly. But outside of that, though, sheesh, MySpace feels like an antique nowadays. <laughs> okay. Whatever, do whatever you do on MySpace to our group. Once again, that is myspace.com slash powerpod. And the audience, you guys, of course, can be asking us questions throughout the show, uh, preferably through Twitch chat or through any place else that I just mentioned where we can see your comments live. Asking us stuff gets you auto-entered into our monthly giveaway. For the month of September, it is Dead Cells on Xbox One. We have a code to give away for that. Uh, Anthony currently possesses a list of all the names that have been entered, and I forgot to get that list for him before he headed out of town, so I did a great oh. job. So we'll have to, we'll probably make that announcement on our community Discord. So, yeah, I'll get that from him as soon as possible. But oh, anyway, this Everything falls apart right? the moment Anthony's not here, huh? <laughs> But then, of course, um, uh, I completely lost my train of thought. Yeah, so basically, go ahead. Ask us questions on this podcast. Get yourself entered in at the very last minute to uh, into the Dead Cells for Xbox One giveaway. Okay, now we're back to it. So, yeah, uh, let's, of course, get into our gaming news. Joel, do you want to start us off? Sure. All, All right. right. Uh, let me go through my notes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay, so... Basically, this year, PlayStation has confirmed that they are not doing a PSX, a uh, PlayStation experience, which they use, uh, which they do. It's kind of like a conventional sorts, kind of like uh, games. What so, is it like GamesCon? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it's like compared to Tokyo Game Show, I think. Sorry, what? Oh, no. I'm trying to remember the PSX from last year, and I think we could go ahead and compare it to how Tokyo Game Show handles their game releases to where they seem to go to talk about the game so much more than actually showcasing the games, or at least from what I can recall from last year, but okay. again, for PSX, I kind of watch it sparingly compared to E3, so 
I'm sure I'm missing a few details <sighs> on it myself. Would it be right. better a Lightning to Legend Nintendo Direct, or... Kind um, of? Uh, I mean, if I were, I mean, again, this is just going off of pure memory, but for the PSX, I think that they usually go ahead and bring out the developers to talk about their games. Mm -hmm. And that only, like, in one or two rare situations do they actually showcase the game. Because, you know, the focus is more like talking about the, you know, what's could be coming up rather than showing it, I think. Because I remember last year during their big conference thing, the only game that they showed was uh, Detroit Become Human. Whereas they talked about Horizon, they talked about God of War. I don't know if they talked about Spider-Man or not, but they were just talking about the games, but not really, like, showing them off, so to speak. Or at least if they did, it may have happened at a different time from the main one that a lot of people were watching. Okay. That's fair. Anyway, so, Joel, what was the greater point you're going to be making here? Uh, so what was I up to? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, um, okay, so, uh, they've been doing uh, PSXs since the 2000, well, since 2004, but then they started doing it again every single year since 2014, so it's kind of, uh, they've been on the streak on it until now, which, uh, obviously, uh, as I just stated that. And so basically what's happening is due to Spider-Man that came out this year, it actually did so well that they feel like they're kind of pressured into showing what games that they have right now, I believe. And because... <laughs> <laughs> That, that's a weird, a menace. That, that is that is a really weird reason well <laughs> i i suppose i sort of understand like um if they honestly have so much pressure on um have so much pressure on like showing games or talking about games that they expect to be on um spider-man's level and stuff like that um uh, then i would totally understand not actually showing it right now until at a later date where they can actually finalize details about these games so okay. it sort of makes sense okay. Okay. What do you guys think? Uh, I mean, see. so it's like, what games would we expect here, like, to be at a theoretical PS that's not realistically? Would we still expect stuff from, like, Last of Us 2 to be there? You know, maybe, maybe Death Stranding stuff? Like, what more is in Sony's kind of utility belt, Days so to gone. speak? Uh, Dreams and Days Gone. Days Gone, what is that? That's the, not the Last of Us game that's got built up until The Last of Us Part 2 got announced, and then it just kind of faded into obscurity, but still pops up every now and then to remind you that there is another post-apocalyptic game with not zombies Okay. Okay. Question mark. <laughs> All Basically, right. it was the game with the bikers. Okay, and the <laughs> other game is Dreams. Uh, we are getting some serious audio bleed. Sorry? Uh, Joel, what you watching in the background? Wait, how can you hear that? <laughs> I don't know, but we hear it. Lamau. Okay. <laughs> anyway. Okay, um, no, it's just something popped up. Anyway, um, so, Dreams is the other game that they're looking at. I have no idea what type of game it is. It looks like some sort of platformer looking at the actual graphics for it. It reminds me of, um... <sighs> wow, I'm really tired. I can't think of the game at all. <laughs> So I guess like the bigger question I'm getting at is, does it's like, do you guys think Sony still realistically has enough to show off with the PSX, or would have had enough to show off with the PSX that would have made it worthwhile, or no at this point in the year? I think they, I think they could have. I think they just didn't. Um, they were just afraid they might not top it. Uh, they might not have topped Spider-Man because it just did so well. But I think they could have still done it. Okay. You know, here's the thing in which I question. Why are we talking about how you can't top Spider-Man when God of War came out earlier this year? You know, call me crazy, but I would have think that if we're going to be talking about Game of the Year out of Sony, I kind of feel like that more people would be leaning towards God of oh, War than they would be with uh, Spider-Man. Well, that's because Spider-Man broke God of War's records, apparently. Yeah. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. Okay, I didn't know about that one, actually. Oh, okay, so yeah, this is a decent news story to bring into it. I think we got this a couple days ago. Uh, yeah, Sony announced that uh, Spider-Man broke God of War's record for the fastest-selling PS4 game. Oh, okay, well, I mean, in that sense, then congrats to Insomniac for pulling that one off. Then. Yeah. But, you know, I still stand by what I said earlier about how I kind of feel like that God of War, you know, if we're going to be comparing games, more people will probably lean towards God of War than Spider-Man. But 
you know, not to say anything bad about Spider-Man, of course, because, you know, definitely I did go ahead and play it when it came out on the Red Box, and I played it so much I got Corporal Tunnel, and I kept playing it regardless. Oh, and man. my wrist was just hurting like hell that whole time. Man. But no, I, yeah, Spider-Man was a really good game, and honestly, even though I got it out of the Red Box, I would honestly consider actually getting it at the uh, full price alongside with God of War, so... No, yeah, definitely. If you have, if you somehow have not played Spider-Man on PlayStation Four, you know, go for it. Really good game. I've been thinking about picking it up, but it's just like I'm not sure. Like I've watched uh, Sean, who's been on the podcast once and is our graphic designer at COG. I've watched his Twitch stream of the game quite a bit uh, lately, and he seems to have fun with it. It seems like a game I would enjoy and have fun playing, but I'm just not sure if I want to spend the sixty dollars on it. You know? Well, no, that's why I was thinking about that either. That's why I went ahead and get out of the Red Fox. But now that after playing it, you know, if I and I would have considered grabbing it for the sixty dollars, but for the three days that I played with the Spider Man, that was more than enough for me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, I from what I know of the Spider Man games, it seems extremely enjoyable. Of course there are always gonna be some down parts to it. There are some parts that make no sense, which I find extremely hilarious. For example, uh the Spider Man, the whole um I don't kill people thing, and yet most, one of your combos is just you just get one of a like giant brick or wall, and then you just throw it at someone's head, and they get knocked out. It's like, come on! <laughs> they're they're okay. not knocked out. Oh, they're dead. Trust me, you can do it far worse than that. You know, you're fighting on top of rooftops, and you're literally blasting people off the, you know, off of giant skyscrapers. And it's like, oh, right you know, he doesn't kill people, like... but I'm pretty sure they'll they're gonna have a soft landing somehow when they hit the ground. Okay, look. They're probably. If, they probably if, have like mattresses at the bottom or something like that. Yeah, Spider Man set up those mattresses in advance because he knew that he, they were going to go flying in that direction. Yeah. <laughs> spider hammocks. Or yeah. Spider hammocks. Yeah. Just, just before every single time he's about to catch criminals, he just makes sure it's still like, uh. The area is just like padded. It's like the area yeah. around his fighting zone is padded. So you don't see them like slamming into a brick wall, you see them slamming into a mattress that happens to be painted like a brick wall <laughs> and it's just flush with the building it's on, you know? Uh that's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Really never good Spider Man. Yeah, and then you look at the Daily Bugle with, uh the Daily Bugle, <laughs> and it's like mattresses covers the whole entire city. Spider Man, a menace to the society. <laughs> well no, that's keeping about, mattress firm in business. Yeah, actually that's another thing to mention, not to get too offhand with the Spider-Man topic, but I also kind of liked what they did with uh, J. Jonah Jameson, because he's no longer running the Bugle, but he is running his own talk show. Isn't he like an like, Infowars type dude? Like, isn't he like Rush an Limbaugh. Alice Jones? Oh, is that what he's yeah. supposed to be modeled after? Rush Limbaugh, Alice Jones kind of thing. It's like, okay. you know, most people would be like, skip, but it's like, you know, every time they came on, it was like, I gotta stop what I'm doing, and I gotta listen of how J. Jonah Jameson is calling Spider-Man a menace. And it's like, God, this is really good writing. Okay. <laughs> That's great. So, I never read... It's like, honestly, Spider-Man wasn't on my radar at all, just because I didn't really care, to be quite honest. It's like, I didn't really care if the game was coming out or whatever. So I didn't pay attention to too many of the reviews. But, so, did it review as acclaimed as God of War did? For that specifically, I'm not too sure. I, I mean, I could double check the Metacritic just to humor ourselves for a sec, but yeah, I think that it had to have gotten some really good scores, though, because a lot of people are singing the praises of Spider-Man. Right, because like I've definitely heard that you know it's a pretty good game and everything. I just haven't heard of it getting rave review scores like I did God of War. But it could just be that I wasn't super in touch with Spider-Man when it came out, or what was going on. Yeah, it would help if I knew how to spell Spider-Man. Need to go and put the little line in between. Yeah. Anyway. Um, Spider-Man apparently is sitting at an 87. Okay. On Metacritic, whereas God of War was sitting at 94, so... Yeah, oh, no, it was okay. kind of like what I said before, of how God of War seems to be more acclaimed than Spider-Man. But of course, that's not to say Spider-Man's not a good game. Right, right. You know, it's just like, you know, last year when we got a... Breath of the Wild and Mario. That's not to say Mario Odyssey wasn't a great game, but yeah, Breath of the Wild kind of etched it out a bit. Yeah. All and right. Also, don't forget, don't forget okay. the Spider. Uh, the name Spider Man is pretty like well known, more than God of War, in my opinion. Right. Especially the, like, well, no, Spider Man's and, basically the poster boy for Marvel, so of course more people with PlayStation Fours would probably go ahead and grab Spider Man before they would grab God of War just by yeah. name recognition alone. 
Yeah, like mm -hmm. Spider Man has a much more of a mass appeal than God of War does. Which is just yep. simple as that, just simple numbers game. Mm hmm. Yep. Alright, so I guess last slight broad question for this topic to go ahead and ask you guys is so what's the next big PS4 game that you guys are looking forward to? Uh, I guess Joel. <laughs> You start with you? That's that's a funny joke. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mike. Sorry, it's not it's it's not that uh, I don't like what they do. It's just I don't have a okay. PS4 or okay, anything that's like that. So I honestly don't look forward to anything that they that they. Yeah, have. I'm not gonna be able to give you a much better answer on that actually because it's not that I don't like the PlayStation 4. Yeah. And I don't play on the PlayStation 4. It's kind of more specific, though, that, you know, I have all three consoles, but I do kind of find myself playing the Xbox One more often when I'm at home. And then I do have the Switch when I'm at work, so... PC yeah, Monster Race. Yeah. Right. The you only got a Mac. You only got a Mac. No, my laptop's a Mac. I have a, I have a Windows desktop as well. Oh, okay, cool. Uh -huh. I have a PC that is always behind, even if I do buy it. Straight out of Best Buy. Okay, that's fair. My PC is currently MIA, but that's besides the point. I guess, <laughs> I guess, like the answer for me is, I, <laughs> Final Fantasy VII remake. I'm not even that bit of a Final Fantasy fan, but I just feel like I would be more excited for that game than I would be for <laughs> Last of Us Two or something. And the thing is, we don't even know if we'll ever get Final Fantasy VII in this lifetime. So, yeah. Yeah, well, it's not going to be coming anytime soon, and even so, technically, the Final Fantasy VII Remake and Kingdom Hearts 3 are going to be, you know, multi-platform games, so... Oh, cr yeah, that's, okay, that's not a PS4 exclusive. Oh, uh, my bad. Yeah, My no, bad, okay. Yeah. I mean, technically speaking, now that I'm looking at the list and lineup of upcoming games, I'd probably say that the, what is that game? Ghost of... Tsushima? Oh, that's yeah, right, Ghost that exists. Tsushima. That's hype. That's going to be hype. Now, if I had to go ahead and pick one game at random... I'll go ahead and give it to that one. I would say yeah. Death Stranding, but technically, <laughs> I need to see more than just uh, Cory Baker as Doctor Doom uh, in Death Stranding. I thought Death. St oh wait, that's right. Is Death Stranding a PS4 exclusive? I thought it was going to be multiplayer. No, no, it's PlayStation. No, I think that one's PlayStation exclusive. So. Oh, okay. Then yeah, my no, answer, one, my answer yeah. is Death Stranding. Then straight up. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, my answer is good. just Death Stranding. So. Yeah, and like I said, I need to actually know what the hell's going on for me to say Death Stranding. I like the direction it's going, but it's still like, you know, you're getting your puzzle and your 10,000 puzzle piece literally one piece at a time per month, it seems, or once yep. per year even, so. Well, you see, that to me is part of the fun of it, is working it, working out what the hell is going on, and then, you know, just kind of seeing if their trailer tops their last one, you know? Yeah, well, between the Del Toro and your Troy Baker and everyone else, it's like, I mean, I, like you said, I do enjoy the mystery of what's going on here, but then at the same time, it's like, you know, I could only get so high for so long, but then when there's no new information, it's like, well, I mean, I'm excited for it, but it's going to be a while until I get more excited for it, so I'm just going to have to be patient on it. That's pretty fair. Yeah, well, I mean, technically, that's kind of how I feel with Smash Ultimate as well, because technically speaking, you know, most people are kind of losing their hype on that, I mean, on Smash Bros. Ultimate right now because there's not that much new information getting circulated there either. The only new information we get is if there's a new character announced because right. during the updates for the blogs, all we get is recycled information that we already know. So yeah. technically, a lot of people aren't really being too patient on that one either, even though we're like about two months away from that one. Yeah. It's almost there. You guys can wait it out. Yeah, but some people really want to just get their hands on it now. They don't want to wait. That's fair. Like with Death Stranding. <laughs> yeah. Game that still has no release date, so... <laughs> I'm honestly halfway expecting it to be a launch title for the PS5. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, especially with all this talk about... What's the PlayStation 4 coding? Does it have one? What do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, Scarlet is the next Xbox. System. Oh, we don't have even done like a code name for the PS5 or anything like that. It's just the yeah, most even that we. A lot of people would probably guess that's going to be the name regardless. Yeah, it's like the most that we got about it is like 2020, 2021 is when we'll start possibly well, having a lot it in of our think hands. That 2019 is when we're going to start getting teasers for it. So oh yeah, for sure. We'll see what happens? For sure, yeah. In the right. for it's uh, the PS, <laughs> the PS64. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> 
No, they'll uh, do. We'll be long dead before that happens. You don't need to worry about it. It could be the PS4K. Well, be technically because that's the 4K. Pro, so. I know, but kind of, but yeah. I mean, kind, kind of, of, but yeah. Not really. I mean, like an actual like 4K 60 FPS gaming console, which would be kind of interesting to see if PS76. it could. PS76. <laughs> the PS76, <laughs> the special PlayStation Fallout 76 special <laughs> thing. We are bringing back our servers after so many years. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway. So, by the way, this is, this podcast is a really fun, like, reference and experiment in, like, our recording time, because, so, usually, it's, like, a little, like, hosting, like, secret of the trade here, is, like, you usually get everyone's opinion to weigh in on a subject and whatnot, and then you kind of go from there and whatnot, but mm -hmm. with us just being, like, three people total, it's just like not having the added discussion of a fourth person adds up over time and significantly reduces the potential recording time of something. Yeah. yeah. You say that as, well, if, uh, as soon as Andrew joins us. That yeah. Are just we'll, we'll, we'll tell. We'll tell. We'll be sure to tell that to Andrew. He comes in and be like, oh, "Damn it, Andrew! We're having <laughs> so much fun about moments. you, man." Well, no, I'm saying this as both like kind of a good <laughs> and bad thing type thing in the sense of okay, I'm gonna have to try a little bit harder to get the content stretched out with only three total people uh, than I would with four. But it's just kind of, this isn't, even, this isn't necessarily like a positive or negative thing, actually just kind of like a little fun fact or tidbit or what have you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, mind you though, that there's still plenty of things that for us to discuss oh, that yeah. we got this week. So yeah. I mean, mind you that I have a few things off to decide too that we could also discuss if we have time for it. So right. you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah, so speaking, speaking of more things to bring to the table, Mike, what you got this week? I want to talk about gaming news. Uh, let's see. Well, I mean, as much fun as it would be to go ahead and talk about that certain character from Nintendo that is the not what's her name, Isabel. That we can go oh, ahead and discuss. yeah, no, we're not talking about that. Okay, I mean, <laughs> mind you, that she is very pretty and makes me question why I and mean, why in hell that it was accomplished, but yeah, we're just gonna skip that. Sorry, guys, but no, um, uh, while we were talking about uh, PlayStation or the PSX. Yeah. Ironically enough, right before that actually happened, when we got that announcement for the PSX not happening, guess who is actually going to get an uh, actual conference thing? Microsoft. Really? Okay. That um, it was announced on the 25th through Xbox that they were going to be having their inside Xbox XO, X0? XO? I don't know. It's Whatever. an Xbox conference okay. that's going to be happening on the 10th of November. Yeah. And um, apparently it's going to be a physical event that's going to be held in uh, Mexico City. So oh. it's going to be like a really big kind of thing that they're planning out. So okay. a lot of people have been speculating on what exactly is going to be happening here. That yeah. everyone thinks that because of all the partnerships that were announced back at E3, that this is going to be like their big breakout, their thing to where they're going to be showcasing like a whole bunch of new, interesting, exclusive Xbox titles, talking about maybe like what's going to be coming up in the next year. And, you know, who knows if they would actually hint to the Scarlet again or not. But, right. you know, technically speaking, a lot of people were caught off guard by this, thinking that, oh, it's going to be Microsoft versus Sony again mm -hmm. because of how we're going to be doing the two conferences. But since <laughs> Sony canceled, that now it seems like the door's wide open for, you know, Microsoft to possibly, you know, take advantage of it. Even though that, of course, as I mentioned before, that we don't know if their approach to this uh, thing on the 10th of November it's going to be the exact same thing like PSX to where they're not going to talk about games, but they're going to be talking about their upcoming games and the things that went into the design and the makings and et cetera, et cetera, and while well, not showing that much gameplay. So who's, I mean, who knows, but yeah, hopefully they'll have something very nice to share with us in November. Yeah. All right. So that's Joel. What do, what do you think about that? Let's get you on this first. I honestly have no idea what to think. <laughs> well, again, I kind of sprung it up at random, so, you know, yeah. if you were caught off guard by this, I'm not going to blame you. Yeah. <laughs> mostly mostly because um, <laughs> I wasn't prepared about what we were talking at all. I looked at yours, and I thought we were going to talk about, you know what? And so I was searching out what the, yeah, no, we're <laughs> who not the talking hell about she it. was. She has okay, swept I... the internet, and everyone <laughs> involved is just... Either confused, horrified, or just jumping on the bandwagon. So we're not talking about. Well, that. see, I'm partially okay. annoyed by the whole thing, but whatever. 
<laughs> All right. Uh, my Microsoft conference. Yeah. I think I I actually don't know because I honestly don't. Uh, has Microsoft been doing or like doing a right within the past few years? Because I honestly think that. No offense, Microsoft. If you're watching this, you guys are a terrible company. Oh my god! Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I have... forgive him. He does not know what he speaks. Because <laughs> yeah. um, I, uh, because I just keep hearing um, m- mistakes from uh Microsoft over and over again. And yeah, you see, I I don't I don't really like play big games from Microsoft or Sony and stuff like that. So the only like um influence or experience I have from them is generally rumors. And so my my group of friends tend to complain about Microsoft a lot. So that that's just the way I am right now. I I don't know. So I I subconsciously don't Oh. Does this not make sense? Yeah. Sort of? Well, no, yeah. it's like what I said earlier, that, you know, for all we know, their approach to this conference will be the exact same as Sony's approach to the conference, to which, you know, they may not show the things that people want to see, and therefore people are going to be raising hell over something minuscule, essentially. Yeah. So I guess, like, the, I guess, like, the bigger <laughs> question that we raised, both from this story and the cancelled PSF story, is... Is there really a place in general for companies to throw on their own exclusive sort of like little mini E3s? Because like Nintendo does a direct, but that's just like, that's pretty much just like a, I, that's almost like a news show, to be quite honest. Like it's a pre-recorded news show, to be honest. So that doesn't, that's Honestly, not like, that's oh. not necessarily the same as, you know, having an entire convention or event for it. Yeah. Yeah, no, trust me. The only company that I can think of that gets close to that is Blizzard. Yeah. With their BlizzCon. Outside of that, I can't think of anyone else who comes close to doing something that big or significant. And again, not to go ahead and bash PSX, Sony, what, and what have you. I kind of feel like that, you know, that is a nice show, but it kind of feels like that. It's a celebration, but if you're expecting new things to come up, uh, don't hold your breath too long, please. I yep. don't know. That's fair. I mean, is we don't. There's no way Sony's at the point as like a both a developer and everything that they're going to start really looking super into the future for the PS4, right? Because I would say pretty much any game announcements we're going to see past uh, whenever Last of Us 2 comes out or whenever like Death Stranding comes out, that will probably be PS5 stuff by that point. Yeah, very, very hard to say, but no, definitely for sure that for all we know that we could be nearing the beginning of the next generation for all we know, but I kind of feel like that with the way that technology kind of has been right now, I wouldn't be surprised if we still kind of rolled with this for who knows how much longer, so. <laughs> yeah. But that's just me looking at the current generation. Okay. Um, there is one other thing we could also talk about too, if you want to, because the only other thing of significant well, note is- Well, hold on, I want to get Joel's but, opinion okay, yeah. on the general question really quick. Okay, yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. So, Joel, it's like, do you think it's appropriate for to have, like, legitimate conventions just around one manufacturer, or would you prefer more companies to see, or to have more, like, a Nintendo Direct style? I think they should just do whatever they want. Okay. Like, if, because it's, uh, honestly, in the end, it's just gonna be the comp- it's just gonna be the company's decision anyway. If it works, it works. As, because it, in the end, it's just advertisement, pretty much. It's just a way of selling the points by exclusively showing how how their company runs, pretty much. Okay. And so, yeah, if if it works, then just do it. Yeah. Personally, I'm pretty partial to the Nintendo Direct style things. Like to me, so E3 is obviously justified because you know it's a party. It honestly is a party. It's the entire industry kind of, well, you know, battening down on the LA, and it's a party, you know. And it's fun. It's just like you're so. It seems with you know just having it's specific exclusive event for these manufacturers, uh, Sony, Microsoft, and whatnot. It seems kind of closed off from the rest of the industry. You know. Mm-hmm. And it's like granted, okay, you know, Sony does in-house make some of the biggest franchises in gaming. So does Microsoft, but I mean, so do a lot of other companies also. You know. Mm-hmm. 
So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of my stance on it. I think Nintendo Direct-styled things are more justified, and I wouldn't mind seeing, like, an Xbox Direct or a Sony Direct, you know? Well, I mean, it would be nice if we got, like, small little tidbit updates, just so that we could know, like, the current status of some games. That would be nice, but it doesn't really seem like Microsoft and Sony are as concerned with it as Nintendo are, because, like, as you mentioned earlier, Sony and Microsoft, they're not the people who, you know, make the games. They put them out, but they're not the ones making them like Nintendo do. Right. And then it's like also Nintendo does seem to have a little bit more control over the development of games, even from third parties going onto their platform. Or they seem mm -hmm. to be a lot more influencing on the development as opposed to. Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Mario Rabbits is a prime example of that, of how, you know, they go as far as to make sure that everything is right, that even if the music is off by just a touch, they'll say, nope, take it back, redo it. All right. So no, yeah, Nintendo does take all their stuff very seriously, even if they do outsource it. Yeah, yeah. And okay, we're gonna do uh, so that you guys aren't left with you know only three news topics, as there are three people. We're gonna kind of shoehorn cram in, or not really cram in. We're gonna get a fourth topic up here, so you'll have a grand total of four when it's all said and done. So anyway, our third topic is hey, guess what? Sony's in the news again this week, and I'm honestly. <laughs> I don't know what Andrew was going to bring, but this does kind of sound like something oh. he might bring up. <laughs> he might bring up. Sony is allowing uh, crossplay now on Fortnite, at least. But the children! You mean they're going back on the children of all people now? Wait, hold on. Oh, are yeah. they shocked? W what do you mean? Like, what's this? Switch... Okay. <laughs> okay. No, but, uh, no. Did Sony yeah. wait? Did Sony like legit comment they're doing yeah. it to protect the children or something? Or are no, you just memeing? They, okay. No. More or less, it was something in regards to. Well, they didn't mention the children specifically, but they did mention something in regards of security and how, like, if something was to happen with like on the side of Microsoft or Nintendo or something, that they wouldn't be able to have control over it because. It's on a different platform, therefore, yeah, understandable. But a lot of people have pretty much transferred and tr translated that into Sony is, and you know, Sony saying, think of the children oh, as their okay. main reason why that cross platforming would never happen. Or at yeah. least not until Fortnite literally became such a big game that you could literally get a Fortnite bundle with any of the big three now. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you could get a uh, I... free game. As a bundle, I, I I just um I I just thought it was pretty ironic how they were they were pretty I uh, because you know how they were pretty arrogant in their statement they were saying um that P um playing Fortnite on the PS4 uh is the best experience of gaming that you probably have compared to the others yeah and also the advantage and stuff like that and then hearing that like a month later <laughs> they accepted crossplay anyway so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just thought it was extremely ironic, and yeah, yeah. that's about it. Okay, I, I think this whole thing is it's incredibly funny, to be quite honest, just because of, kind of, Joel, what you mentioned, you know, Sony was very adamant about not allowing crossplay, and yeah. uh, it's like, alright, fine. <laughs> Although, do you guys want to add some drama to this story? Uh, let's hear it. Bethesda, oh who reamed Sony for not supporting cross-platform play isn't going to, like, Fallout 76 will not be cross-platform, and that's on the part of Bethesda, who just got done reaming Sony for not being cross-platform, like, cross-play. Well, I mean, technically speaking, is, I mean, wasn't a Fortnite 76 golden already, or close to golden? What? Or Fortnite. you know how they say, like, if um, a game's gone gold or something, or... It's basically all ready to be shipped out or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. okay. I mean, technically speaking, it's not to say that I defend Bethesda or anything, but it's like, you know, obviously if Sony was basically telling them, no, you're not going to get cross-platform, don't think that you could be able to set that up because we're never going to allow it. Yeah. And then, you know, if they go ahead and then suddenly do it, it's not like that they could suddenly flip it around if they never set it up to do that, right? so to speak. You know, it's kind of like how, you know, My I mean, Minecraft had set that up to do that. But then I'm pretty sure, like, if you were to go ahead to, like, say, Rockstar Games with the uh, GTA Online, that I don't know if they had set it up to where they could do cross-platforming or not. But technically speaking, you could just go to Rockstar and say, hey, enable cross-platform play for Xbox One and PlayStation 4 now that Sony's yeah. allowed it. Do it. Do it. It's like, you know, and if they don't do it, 
Should we just get as angry as them as we are with uh, Bethesda and Fallout 76? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, fair enough. If you no want to double standards exist. Okay. No, my, Eliminate double no, standards. My, my, my main concern, because uh, I, I don't know how arrogant Bethesda was, was not that Sony refused to do cross-platform. That's fine. That is their... That is their um, choice. No, yeah. That's their choice in the end. Yeah. It is not, and honestly, as a company, it's there's nothing much that customers really have much say in doing so. But my main concern was the fact that Sony had a uh, how should I say this without being extremely rude? It's gonna be hard that. to do it, so you're just gonna. They just were on the okay. They were on a very high, a high horse. And very the highest of horses, if you will. The highest of horses. There's so much weed in that. Anyway, <laughs> it, it actually triggered me to see that they would s state that playing PS4 is the best way to play Fortnite. There is no reason to attack other companies or be that arrogant by as their justification. If they honestly said, we don't want to do cross plays because we don't want to, that's fine. I would not care. But they like gave so much crap to other companies by being so arrogant, and that's what pissed me off. Yeah, like that's it probably the only concern I have of them. It probably could have gone a lot nicer for Sony if they said we don't want to spend the time and resources towards crossplay. That's our reason. Yeah, that's fine. That would have been really fine. fine. That would have been fine. I, I would... <laughs> that's that's plenty enough justification. I would not mind that because in the end, it's their choice. They are the developers. Yeah. And. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's... <laughs> well, no, trust like... me. The way that I was looking at it myself for this whole thing was, like, how right before the Xbox One came out, that they were mentioning the whole thing with the DRM and how, you know, the guy who was at the time running the show says, well, we have a game, or we have a system that doesn't require you to be online all the time. It's called the Xbox 360. <laughs> and, you know, not to say that technically that this matches that one-to-one uh, one ratio or what have you, but... Technically speaking, I would probably say that that kind of is like a few steps behind that in regards of kind of like showing a bit of arrogance to, you know, giving a response to legitimate concerns or, you know, people that are raising concerns about something. Because, you know, like what you just said, that if they just said, no, we do not believe in cross platforming, that's it. You know, fine. They put their foot down. They left their response and it sucks, but that's what they chose. But because they went ahead and put it as, well, Technically, we are the best. We know how to do games. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Let me powder my face. <laughs> you know, technically, because that they were doing it like that, it's like, oh, wow, they are literally doing what Microsoft did right before the next generation. And, you know, for all we know, you know, not to say it's going to come back and bite them or anything, but technically, you know, some people may go ahead and look at that like, really, that's your response. And, you know, for people who defend Sony, it's like, well, yeah, that is their response. They're the best. <laughs> Meanwhile, other people are like, no, you're, you're full of it. You're it's like, you're garbage. Are you kidding me? Them. You guys are garbage. Uh, are you kidding me? Uh, yeah, go Sony ahead. Like build a wall. See what happens, Sony. <laughs> Sony's building a wall. Or they're making Nintendo pay for it. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, All right. Here, here's your political rants. Yeah, okay. Tr culture of politics over here, guys. <laughs> Uh, and All right. because I'm actually Republican, but that's beside the point. <laughs> Do you know the amount of hate you're about to get from everyone watching this, possibly? I don't know. I haven't, like, asked our viewers what their politics are or anything. I don't intend on doing that, but I'm just saying. I, it's not such a fun... I, I can't imagine it being a fun place to be on any side right now. So, oh no, trust me. Yeah. All I'm just gonna say, not gonna dive too into it, but let's just say that people just seem to mix up the radical right with the right, and it's like, they're not the same, but no one's gonna pay attention to that detail. But again, right. that's going way too far, and that's a discussion I'm never gonna dive into any further than just saying that. So let's uh, let's go ahead and keep talking about video games, because that's what we're all here for. Although, yes. I do admit my I topic... I for politics. It feels bad. <laughs> What's up? I, mean, um... I thought I was here for politics. <laughs> no. Okay, no. This is culture of gaming, not culture of politics. We are moving on. Yeah. All right. So, yeah. My, my topic isn't necessarily 
specific video game, but it's gaming centric because of the market it's targeted <coughs> towards. All right, so primarily Intel, you know, the vid processor manufacturer. Obviously, I, I'd imagine people know Intel, who Intel is, what they do, what they make, and whatnot. They have two primary markets, okay, or consumer based markets 22 nanometer and 14 nanometer, okay? 22 nanometer is what you see in a lot of uh, consumer workstation parts and whatnot. So it's like their Intel like 7900X or whatever, whatever that one is called. The i9s are basically the 22 nanometers is a decent way of just kind of generalizing it. All right, anyway. And then there's the 14 nanometers, which is your i3, i5, i7s. So, you know, your 8700Ks of the world and whatnot. Okay, those are the two primary consumer chipsets that they have going for them. Okay, okay. Technically, chipsets isn't the proper term, but those are the two primary size of the chips that they work with. So, anyway, I digress this point. You know, Intel also has very successful and booming markets in various other nanometer sizes and whatnot, because high, heavier enterprise industrial stuff uses more or less space. So, Intel has not structured over the past couple of years has not been structuring their fabs to keep up which are their you know manufacturing plants and everything for the processors to keep up with what um, is now in an increased demand in their uh, consumer based sizes so in the 22 and 14 nanometer departments because they honestly thought they would have had 10 nanometer out by now for the consumer market reducing demand of both 22 and 14 but because intel has had trouble for whatever reason getting their 10 nanometer stuff battened down and out and had to delay it of course they announced that they're investing an additional 1 billion dollars into trying to meet the new found demand for 22 and 14 nanometer chips did that make sense to anyone here? No. <laughs> okay. Basically, anyway, I, basically, I, 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 okay. I use computers. I don't know anything about. All right. The long and short of it, <clears throat> I guess the easiest way to have it come full circle, and the long and short of it, TLDR is Intel didn't anticipate additional demand for consumer grade chips. So now they're investing $1 billion to try and meet the demand. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, yep, I get it. So. Alright, so, anyone, anyone got any sort of opinion on this, Mike? Got I'm anything? <laughs> <laughs> what was I, that? Everything you just said right now just made me go ahead to have that one sequence with uh, Spongebob where Patrick just short circuits after a long <laughs> explanation. That, I play that sound effect right now because literally I have no idea what in the world was just said, and I apologize for not knowing. Okay, Maybe you know what? what? Uh, simply put, simply put, this is what I'm interpreting from Taylor. They Why? created the chip which everyone wants more of, and so they're spending a lot of money yeah. to figure okay. out. Yeah, no, I got the TLDR, it's just that everything before that, I was just like, oh, right. whoa, okay. too much information. Okay, my you know, bad I mean, on that one. Yeah. yeah, no, that's fine, that's fine. I just kind of got lost myself, but anyway, though, I mean, yeah, supply and demand is a really complicated matter of sorts, and, like, it's always going to be an issue regardless of, like, if it's with, like, computer chips, game consoles, or anything in the world. So it's like, you know, it's understandable if they could go ahead to have looked at it, didn't think that there was going to be as high a demand and that suddenly, you know, it just spirals out of control, which is yeah. good. But then at the same time, though, that's it's still kind of pretty bad if, you know, there's a lot more demand for something than you anticipated. And who knows if by the time that you go ahead and make more, if they may go ahead to lose their patience and go elsewhere, with, you know, with what they're trying to find. Right. And that is now so, a very real threat with uh, Risen 2 coming. Or already yeah. out, rather. So AMD is now competitive in the CPU market. Yeah. <clears throat> and again, that for me, myself, I wish I was more into PC gaming. Like I said, that the best I do with my PCs is like if I go to Best Buy and buy a new computer tower for myself. Yeah. That works great until the next day when I realize it's outdated as heck. But okay. But no, I. And with that said, though, that. You know, if I was more into PC gaming, this would be something in which I'm sure I would be a lot more focused in on. But yeah, as is, I'm just, you know, kind of along for the ride on this one. All right, fair enough. Joel, what's your opinion? 
Um, where to start? First things first, thumbs up to them for actually spending a lot of money and following with the actual demand. Okay. I'm I'm not I'm not entirely sure like if every single company would do something similar like that to to you know benefit the customers more. So I thought that was bold move, bold move, <laughs> and total total props to them as well. Like. <laughs> yeah. Just like that was a really good job, and okay. um, secondly, I feel very—I don't want to say empathetic or sympathetic because I have no idea how it actually feels. But the fact that they were forced into this kind of situation, I feel like it's really sad to them. So yeah, I feel so. I feel sorry for them. That it was really unfortunate that they had to be in this scenario. So yeah. That's the only thing I can say. Okay. I'm going to have to play devil's advocate here and kind of say that I'm disappointed with Intel that they had to get to this point because, um, or that they... <laughs> what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> okay. No, it's like, I, it, to me, this does kind of show a little bit of complacency on their end. Because now they're under the very real threat of being supplied out of the market by AMD. That's the mm -hmm. thing. It's just like... Yeah, like I said earlier, that they're not meeting the demand, so they're going to get their demand elsewhere. Right. Yeah, I feel sorry for them. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough, fair enough. Alright, anyway, so... Uh, I don't, I, don't, I don't want... You know what? Screw it. We'll talk about it, but we'll talk about it eventually. Okay. That I think that uh, that about does it for gaming news. So let's talk about some movies. Uh, you guys, X Men fans here? Uh, not a huge fan, but I did enjoy Wolverine. Okay. In general, his character. I think he is an amazing character. Okay. You mean uh, Logan? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I mean, technically, if you were to go to say Wolverine, you're going to be talking about the one where they went ahead to show Deadpool's mouth shut. So you might want to. No, 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 no. I mean the character. No, I mean the character Wolverine. Not the movie. Oh, the character Wolverine. Yeah. Oh, okay. No, yeah, yeah no. Hugh Jackman is a really good Wolverine. Yeah. And it's just sad. like I, more, but, I, I personally did not like any X-Men movie except for First Class. Oh, beautiful masterpiece. But uh, <laughs> other than that, I did not like any other X-Men movies. The only saving grace for like why I watched them was simply because of Wolverine. Fair enough. He, he just he just single-handedly carried those movies. So um, you're talking about the Phoenix Saga, right? Uh, I haven't Phoenix? I haven't formally mentioned it yet, as I didn't see if Mike was a fan of X Men or not. But oh. honestly, for my involvement, it goes as far as the cartoon. Outside of that, I mean, I watched the X Men sparingly, including the movies. But it was like, you know, yeah, the first movie was good, but then it's like it starts to go down and down. Went up again a little bit, then right. down. And then Logan happened, which everyone was happy about. But yeah. honestly, by that point, I just kind of stopped watching the comic films from Fox, which was a pretty good choice considering Fantastic did such a wonderful job, right? <laughs> yeah, Fantastic. <laughs> All right, hey, Davey. I mean, thank God for Deadpool, or otherwise everyone would be hating on yeah. Fox right now. All right, hey, Welcome back uh, to the chat there, Davey Rider 12 how, how are you doing today? Anyway, uh, yeah, so, X-Men, Dark Phoenix. I don't know who that is or what that is in the grand scheme of things, Phoenix. but I guess... Um, uh, what, Gene Grey? I guess the movie yeah, got Gene delayed Gray. or something after a trailer dropped. I don't know. I kind of found that to be really ironic, where you would go ahead and show the trailer, and then almost immediately, if not the next day, you go ahead and announce that it's getting pushed back. Which, I mean, it's understandable if a movie gets pushed back, but you would think that if it was getting pushed back, they would have delayed the trailer a little bit, because now it seems redundant to go ahead to have the trailer and then tell people, well, I hope you're excited, because it's going to be released a little bit they, more they back usually, than we thought. They usually show off the trailer um, in the middle of shooting. They don't normally finish movies when they, when they release the trailer. Okay. Yeah, well, again, it's just weird timing on this one, though why they would have just announced a delay right after showing the trailer. Yeah. That'd be like if they were to go ahead to show a game at E3, and then the next day, oh, by the way, guys, it just got delayed. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Breath. Uh, Breath of the Wild in a nutshell. 
Well, technically speaking, but at least Breath of the Wild stalled a little bit before announcing their delay. Uh, three minute countdown until pizza gets here. All right, man. Yeah, pizza's pretty good, especially on a Saturday night. Whew. Nothing beats like pizza and video games on Saturday, you know? Sunday morning for me. I'm yeah. tired. Yeah, sorry, Joel. <laughs> I know what I'm doing tonight. Thank you. Oh, I need <laughs> to play a sad violin for my mood right now. Just... Okay. <sighs> uh, let me see. Has there been any kind of initial reaction to the trailer myself? Or to the trailer itself? I don't Because I... I don't really know if like people have been losing their minds or if they're just shrugging just because there's no Hugh Jackman in this one. So it's like, well, is the interest there or is it not there? I certainly haven't heard anything, like on Reddit or 4chan or anything. I have I, not I heard anything. Uh, I, I haven't actually personally seen the trailer or any like, mention about it in the first place. I have no idea about it, but... I mean, I, at least the ratio I'm, I'm not 100% looking forward to it, because, you know, as I said, I don't like the X-Men movies that much, so... Yeah, okay. hopefully, hopefully, I'm hoping that they they blow my expectations out of the water because that and I I know this is gonna sound really weird, but I personally love being wrong when it comes to movies. Okay. When when it when like I think a movie is gonna be absolutely terrible, like um, uh, Ho Hotel Transylvania. I yeah. thought it was gonna be extremely terrible, and when I watched it, I thought. Wow, this is completely like mind blowing. It was good. And it's like wow, this is worse than I thought. This is no, worse than I thought. Hotel, oh. Transfer Hotel Transylvania was good. So you will remember that there was a time that Adam Sandler was indeed funny. Oh yeah, yes, that's right. That, yeah, that's true. That's true. Well, not particularly Adam like Adam Sandler, but I mean, was Click was like, good. It was more like the the idea, the idea of it. I didn't that, hate yeah. grown-ups. Yeah, it sounds like it's a cash -in, but they, they actually did more with it than you thought that they were going to. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay. That, 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 that's my point. And so I, I just like it when, you know, I'm, I'm proven wrong by it, and, you know, I can actually enjoy a movie. All right. So, yeah. I, I really, really hope that this is the case with um, Phoenix Saga, because apparently it's a really popular saga as well for okay. X-Men. What, what, what even is it about? Like, I've never even heard of this character. What, uh, Jean Grey? Jean Grey is oh, a very, okay. very powerful. No, like, that's literally who it is. It's Jean Grey, who, as Jean you know, Grey. is your psychic, but then she just gets, you know, taken over by a mysterious cosmic force. As oh, okay. As put on the uh, trailer on the YouTube, trending 22, apparently, but... Okay. Yeah, no, technically, she just loses her mind, and I guess everyone has to try to stop her, even though she's basically, like, a godlike figure at this point. But then oh. at that point, Lovely. something, 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 get X-Men person in here to better explain. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Are you guys, do you guys have any sort of excitement over this movie or no? Nope. Nope. Okay. I, I just hope it's good. That's about it. All right. No, no, same here. Hopefully it does good, but if you're going to be telling me this is the must-watch movie, uh, you know what? Avengers 4 is going to be coming like before or after this, and I think that's getting a lot more people's attention than Dark Yes. Movie, yep. Yep. Alright. Oh, wait. Yeah, a lot of people Marvel. are looking forward to Captain Marvel right now. Yes. Oh, yeah, sorry. oh Captain Marvel. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I saw, um, sorry, I'm so pumped for it, because they have so many, like, references to past movies and stuff like that. Like, um, the, you know, Ro oh, Ronan, the, like, Ronan the Accuser and, um, Oh, I forgot. I forgot the other, the other, um, the other guy's name from Guardian of the Galaxy. But basically, they're like in the same team as her. So seeing seeing bad guys used to be, uh, used to be like some sort of defenders of the universe. Kind of, it, it it kind of make it, it's kind of mind boggling to me, and I find it quite an enjoyable idea. And seeing it where it goes from there, like will Ronan still be a bad guy in Captain Marvel? Uh, I have no idea how to answer that because I don't actually know who Ronan was. Oh, Ro Ronan is uh was a terrible villain. He was um in the original Guardians of the Galaxy. The oh, that was... the hammer. oh, that was the hammer. Oh, that was him. Okay, him. I know who that is. Him. Okay. Yep. The guy with the hammer. The right. guy with the hammer, and then he put the Infinity Stone inside it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know the guy who got the guy who got defeated by a dance off. Yes. I thought he was defeated by the power of friendship. No, he was defeated by a dance off. No, it was. No, nerd. It was clearly the power of love. 
Friendship! <laughs> Actually, to be more accurate, it was the power of sexual tension between Star-Lord and Gamora, but whatever. Okay, I'll go to roll with that. <laughs> yeah. What? Nothing. We're making How? up the mythos of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I thought it was the sexual tension between Drax and Rocket. What are you guys on about? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's the reason why we're never going to get Ga I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy 3. For just that reason and no other reason alone. Nope. Okay. Tragedy. Yep, uh, man, it's a damn shame. All right. So, any any last thoughts about Dark Phoenix here, or no? Nope. I hope it does well. Okay. That's that. uh, that's optimistic. Oh, that's yeah. helpful of you. Oh, that, that, yep. Yeah, that. Oh. <laughs> Joel, you don't seem ready for it. No, 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 it's just no. I'm just tired. I'm just tired. All right, fair enough. You make it sound like you're losing hope. Oh. That's what Apocalypse and Days of Future Past were meant to be. And they both failed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, we'll see what happens, but hopefully it will do something that we don't expect it to. Otherwise, yeah. though, if it's like your standard run-of-the-mill X-Men movie, then yeah, just... I I, I just, just because I just there's gonna be other comic book movies coming out. I, I just want another one that's like Days... Uh, not Days of Future First, First Class. class. Oh, that was such a masterpiece! I love it. <laughs> okay. That's how you do X Men films. <laughs> I, yeah. I think the only one I saw was Apocalypse. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I didn't like it that much. The the only thing good from it was probably Quicksilver. All right, fair enough. Anyway, he, he is actually oh. he's probably on he's probably on par with um. How, like how much I like Wolverine as a character as well. I, I love Quicksilver as a character. Yeah. All right. Cool. Sorry. Uh, continue. No, it's good. So, uh, anime news. So, past movie news into anime news. You guys, My Hero Academia fans at all? Ooh, movie. I know about it. Are um, you, Are you a fan not... of the series? Answer the question. Yes or no? No. I do follow sorry. the series, I and mean, I do follow the series a bit, and I do like what they do with it. So overall, you know, I don't I often follow it as closely, but I do like how they've been handling it, at least for the parts that I've been following. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, 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 um, I read the manga until I think the to uh, it was like a tournament stage or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Sorry, I haven't read it in a very long time, and I thought. I, I don't really want to like catch up to date because I wanted to finish first before I decide to read the rest. And I felt like there was going to be um, there was going to be something terrible that was going to happen at the end of the line. So I didn't want to you know get myself down uh, before before the series ended. So I stopped and I'm just waiting for the series to end first before I finish it. All right, that's fair. All right, that's so yeah, my buddies and I are pretty big fans of it. Uh, the movie, which is called the T Two Heroes or like the Double Heroes or something like that, uh, mm -hmm. they, which takes place before season three, uh, it's got due to high demand. It's got an extended theater release here in North America. Very glad to hear. Yeah, which is great to hear. It's, uh, it's already released here. I saw it, I saw it, uh, uh, screening in oh, okay. the cinema where yeah. I am. So. <laughs> and and <laughs> as, and as if it wasn't already like as if it already wasn't a uh, thing or in case you had any concerns for whatever reason a fourth season is in fact confirmed <clears throat> Yay. just in case that was somehow a question for people that nah, should never have been brought into question that you know basically my hero academia is now our current generation of the you know mangas that we now have that you know there was the dragon ball the one piece and the naruto and you know while one piece is still ongoing i'll just say one piece know, is still going my dude yeah no exactly but technically speaking you need something to replace your naruto's and your dragon balls yeah and what have you and technically you know a lot of people do go to point towards my hero academia to go to fill in that hole and you know yeah. rightfully so it's a really good series yeah. and you know pretty much almost all the characters are likable in their own ways Whether every girl is best girl Every yeah, girl is best exactly. girl. Yeah, the characters are really good uh, compared to like a lot of other series uh, that I find. And also, a thing about One Piece, I actually don't think it's as good as it was before when it first started. So I kind of stopped following. Well, I mean, I'm, 
I think just let you try to crank out 800 some odd episodes and have them all be good, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's and that's fine. That's fine. It's not, um, yeah. It's not. It's not. It's not. Um. <sighs> I'm not saying like it's your judgment is invalid or anything because of that, but I'm just saying it's just like if a series has like 800 episodes, I don't think it's reasonable to expect all of them to be good. That's you that's very true. That's very true. To like, to, I I I understand that. No, I won't. I won't judge a series based on just that. It was just the reason why I got put off was um after uh what was it after the to uh, toy island you just got you just uh, sorry uh older just got really uh, older the, the author got really really desperate or i felt like he got really desperate and so uh i read the manga i don't watch the anime yeah for like six chapters straight it was just full of plot twist after plot twist <laughs> So it came off as like the it author was, it, being like, how can I twist the series to maybe still have some degree of fun with it? Yeah, exactly. And some of it made no sense at all. Like he has such a good he has such a good build up from um Punk Hazin, right? About the um, sorry, spoilers. We should probably put a spoiler tag somewhere. Uh spoilers yeah, um, for One Piece. <laughs> and so the in, in Punk Hazin, he has such a he, he has such a good um such a strong uh strong characters with the whole introduction of the japanese samurais and he had the little kid who was meant to be the son of that specific samurai right they had a relationship that was similar to father and son they built it like that and then boom one island after they're not he's actually there's some sort of prince and that and the father is actually a god and that was the whole like like plot twist i'm like there was no revelation of that at all it was just all of a sudden and then after that there was another plot twist where it turns out there was actually a third guardsman even though they specifically stated there was two and the third one's a ninja and then that's the whole like plot twist the guy's a ninja and then so they tried to fill he tries to fill it with comedy that that ninjas are so OP and stuff like that in that specific chapter and I just rolled my eyes because it was not interesting at all just seeing six chapters of just non-stop plot twists okay and yeah I honestly felt my heart drop from that it was just so disappointing for me one piece sorry I don't know what is going on honestly can't blame you That's, it, 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 I'm sure it's daunting to get into I'll just say that yeah like, I see those 800 episodes on, like, Verve, and I'm just like... <sighs> it's like, do I want to go down this journey? Do I really want Probably to? Probably not. Yeah. It, it, I would have suggested a few years back, but now... Now yeah. not so much? Okay. No. Which is strange, because that There's buddy that made it through 800 some odd episodes during one summer, like, off from school. Yeah, I, th I think, um... It has so much potential, so I'm just kind of upset about it, that's all. Alright, fair enough. <laughs> Mike, what, what you been yeah. thinking? Uh, in regards to what exactly? I know we were talking about My Hero before. What you <laughs> so. Sorry, I went uh, Either <laughs> topic, either topic. Well, I mean, I've said my piece already that, okay. you know, technically, that My Hero Academia is this generation's Naruto, essentially. Yeah, alright, so then, okay, speech, so. let's bounce, bounce off that topic. So we have... Alright, so One Piece is still going on, which is insane. Naruto, uh, Boruto has been going pretty strong so far, okay? Dragon Ball had a decent run with Super. Yeah, I've heard, like, mixed things, but overall positive things about Boruto. I'm kind of hoping that after the Brawly movie comes out, they do announce the next season of Super, because, yeah, technically there's a lot of miscellaneous holes that still need to be filled in, especially if this is supposed to be in a timeline where GT still technically exists. Yeah. Exists. So GT yeah. will never exist in my book. Okay. Slap you. Bleach anyway. isn't still going on, is it? Did, did it end? Did Bleach no, end? Bleach came to an end. Okay. Yeah, Bleach. It came Bleach at a couple, couple months after Naruto. So yeah. Okay. So it's just like the two big new shonens that are going to be like long standing, probably as Naruto and uh, you know as uh, Bleach at were and whatnot is going to be MHA and Black Clover. Oh, Black Clover is pretty um, good. I need to remind myself with Black Clover because I came in at a time to where, just to go ahead and put it up in a really fast, not to go to plug another podcast, but if you guys listen to a weekly manga recap, I listened to it from a time and I need to get back to listening to it. 
But yeah, the first couple of chapters was your basic kind of, ugh, I oh, hate this protagonist. It's very slow. And yeah. the screaming I mean, up. in the yeah, sub, the screaming in the sub so version annoying. is horrible, which is why you watch the <laughs> dub for it. But yeah, it's it's a <sighs> decently fun show. It's kind of fun. I'm going to go ahead and give it another another shot because it's been a while, so maybe it's got better over time. You need to but give it's... it like a 20 episode shot. No, <laughs> it's like it, it, it does, you're asking it, that guy to binge Netflix, kind of, like, and it's like you know, t- ten episodes, maybe twelve oh, might. Yeah, give it the old college oh, try, you know. Give it the old college try. No, trust me, I kind oh. of watched that show on Netflix, well, the one with the cursed swords or whatever. I yeah. thought it was gonna be good, but oh god, did I regret it? <laughs> I'm I sorry. got. I got no. I wanted to go ahead and try Black Clover just to get a fair shake, but. No promises. I'll say that much. No uh, promises, but I'll give it a shot. But okay, at least wait until, he, at least wait until at least one like uh, arc, like kind of tiny arc past the uh, Magic Knight trials before you judge it. I would say it's not the one where everyone's in swimsuits, right? No. Okay. No. Uh, trust me. The thing about Black Clover that I saw, it was literally like, what would Naruto be if we decided to throw in elements from Fairy Tale? Yeah, that's pretty much it. Speaking of fairy tales, uh, so it's like the fall season yeah, of anime. Yeah, f- like oh, yeah, fairy, the fall season, too. the fall season of anime is starting up in like a week or so, and uh, fairy tales going to be on its last uh, run as a show. Yeah. Crying shame. I, uh, I, I did not have the heart to finish fairy tale. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> I guess just got very, it got very sad. Too I guess for my heart. I guess the author is gonna change how it ended with the show to a better ending than how the manga or the original That's series ended. Because yeah. he wasn't happy with it. To make it better. Yeah, he wasn't happy with it. Same thing with Attack uh. on Titan or whatever. Well, no, technically speaking, I want them to go back where if there's an anime or a show that needs an update, it's Bleach. Oh, yeah, okay. Bleach pissed me off so much during that last arc. It's like, no, don't end it like this, please! Yeah. It's like, you know, no, wait, wait, wait. And no, um, they, they, did, they need to go back, Kubo, to go back and fix that. Just guys, so that guys, it can be... Hear me out about yeah, Bleach. They should have ended after Soul Society arc. I never watched Bleach, after so Eisen's I have no idea what that is. After Aizen was defeated. Yeah, yeah that would have been a good place, it, but it, no, he I, kept going. I, yeah, yeah. This, I had this, um, I had this, like, talk with a lot of my friends before. The reason why is because uh, the, you remember the original plot of Bleach, right? The one yes. that was stated from the beginning. There's a plot he to was Bleach. To take, he was to take. Okay, so he was to take over the powers of a Soul Reaper, right? Because he put her in harm, basically, and so he is forced to do her job until she regains her powers again. And that's what happens at the end of Soul Society arc she gets her powers back and then he still continues this story well technically of course because you've left over a giant plot of an evil bad guy who now is you know in yeah. play so you need to I, fix I, that I, I get that i get that but why continue it, it... well it wouldn't be a good ending yeah, if yeah, you literally yeah, ended I... with the protagonist almost getting chopped in half I, I i get i get that i'm just saying that he should have oriented it and finished it there, so he should not have made a new subplot or any other plots. He should have just focused on getting a good ending there, and it would have been <laughs> just a perfectly fine series right then. Finish him. <laughs> yeah, never actually watched Bleach. Just like never actually watched One Piece. Yeah. Oh well. Oh, wait, well. what's this? Okay. I'm okay. wait, Davy Red. I'm liking Overlord thus far. Yeah, I responded Ooh. to him. I watched, oh, like, oh, I binged Lord. the first 10 episodes of the first season before the podcast. And I'm honestly uh, probably going to finish the first season right after we did done. Which one Which one was Overlord again? Uh, Ainz, Mr. Skeletal. Gets... Mr. Skeletal. Yeah, 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 I know. There's, there's two. There's two. Basically, which one was... I think it's the one where he's stuck in a game, but he has to still play yeah, the role they're, they're both... based <laughs> they're for the both... They're both he's stuck in the game. Uh, was he was he a knight? Was he the knight or was he? No, he's the literally the overlord, mage. 
The mage. Okay, so it's the mage. The one, one with right. the girl who seems to cannot, you know, Albedo. emotions. Albedo. So there is, yes. there is legitimately another series that is very similar. That Long the guy Horizon? goes into. No, that the guy goes into the game, he becomes a skeleton. Except he's like, um, he's like a paladin, even though he's a skeleton, which makes it hilarious. And so they're both just as OP, and they both okay. are very similar. Like, yeah, Overlord is not that characters. then. Yeah, Overlord well, is not that. Yeah, Overlord. I know, I know. It's just I, I yeah. know which one it was. It's just okay. that I couldn't remember which skeleton one it was. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But yeah, it's it's decent so far. I'm not. There's a couple things like you connect to with it, like your friends like slowly stop playing an MMO over time or whatever. That one kind of that little theme whenever they touch on it, kind of yeah, that kind of hits me a little tough. But it's decently entertaining so far. I like it. <sighs> All right. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's kind of like that's past the uh, that's kind of. Elicitization. Oh. Elicitization when it comes out. I'm so pumped. For one that. week, one week, one week, and I cannot oh. wait. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My heart. Oh. Yeah, no, no spoilers, please. I haven't read ahead. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I'm not I haven't read ahead. I'm not... I only do the show. Don't worry. Don't worry yeah. about it. Although I kind of have a guess as to the general idea as to what's going on. Like, I kind of have a guess that I think is correct, but I'm not sure. I'll find out. Okay, let's let's. Can I hear it? I'll I'll tell you after the call. How about that? Or after the okay, podcast? Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay, okay. Okay. All right. Anyway, so that's kind of out of our structured news segment portion of the podcast. So, um, or actually, uh, Davy Ryder liked Lock Horizon. Yeah, Lock Horizon's great. Also, I mm -hmm. I I hope someday we'll get a third season because the light novels have started coming back out. So I hope someday we'll get a third season. And the, then, uh, you know, you know what, you know what they need? No game, no life to finish. A second they need season. another season. No game, no life. I am like eight episodes into that one, and I, I, will, I might finish it tonight. Also, I might, yeah, I might uh, finish. That one, I mean, that's a series that makes me smile, actually. Yeah, no game, yeah. no life is pretty good. Uh, Food Wars, but it's kind of oh, fanfare-ish. Sh uh, Shogeki no Soma. Is that yeah. the one? Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Okay. I'm a bit half, half as it is. I'm waiting for. I got to the part in the monk. Oh, I don't miss. It. Should I spoil it? Uh, do, do you guys do you guys mind if I spoil it, or else I'm gonna say it? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't spoil it right now. Okay, all right. But basically, oh, no, just I, I just I'm just gonna. Oh, hello. What? Hello. In terms of characterization for the main character and his development, it does not bode well in some in the long run. It makes no sense. So yeah, I'm just I'm, that's all I'm gonna say. Okay, fair enough. I'm like. Eight episodes into it, I think. I, I don't know. I started it a couple months ago and I've watched it off and on. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that's like, so that's how the structured news portion. And uh, we don't have any community questions, but there is one more topic I think we do have to cover. Uh, Bowsette. Uh, I thought we agreed we weren't going to cover that. I thought we weren't going to, but... Well, no, the, think right. of the memes, man. Think of the memes, okay? So what, what, what's, so what's so, like, wrong about uh, about that? I don't understand why you're so adamant about it. Um, do well, you want to explain it, or do you want me to do it? Well, I'm sure he knows, like, what it is conceptually, but I'm, personally, it's like, I'm more annoyed by it than anything, just because there are some, like, fan art subs and everything that I'm on on Reddit and everything, that aren't like they aren't NSFW or anything, so don't get the wrong idea here. But there, like, there are some fan art subs I'm on, and they've just been flooded the past couple days with like Bowsette esque stuff, and it's just super annoying. Uh, okay. Yeah. Cause I, like, I think she could be an interesting character, so I don't really understand why. You know, I also have a question for that. Why are we referring to Bowsette as a she, even if it's just Bowser in disguise? It, isn't it a she? Isn't it a she? It, it's uh, Bowser in disguise. It, oh, it's actually Bowser in disguise. I didn't even yes, know. Yes, have you seen the original comic for the origins of Bowser? No. Uh, yeah. Well, it was just such a okay, Bowser. Yeah. Looked, uh, no, I, I don't kinda, only think I saw was the character. I kind of like, figured okay, that. I kind of figured that with like the little like peach crown or whatever power up thing that it got based off of, 
that, because, Mike, I think the document you're referring to, that didn't come out until just the other day, uh, until a couple days after Bowsette was taking the internet by storm. But, like... Yeah. I well, assume some... Really fast, I am... No, I assume some degree of gender bending goes on during that process. Well, no. Like, literally, um, I mean, I don't know how we could be able to link the comic elsewhere, what have you, but in the chat between the three of us, I did go ahead and post that comic there. Okay. It's literally that... If you go ahead and you take the scene at the very end of Odyssey to where Paige rejects Bowser and Mario. They're both sad, but then Bowser just turns and looks over to Mario and is holding that power up. Oh. And, go ahead and that Toadette would use. So literally in the next panel, which is the Mario Aces, you literally have Mario talking to Bowsette while Peach and Luigi are horrified. Mario gets rejected That's the by... origin. Thanks for yeah, Mario Odyssey spoilers? That. Are you Odyssey spoilers? What? <laughs> Wait, seriously? Uh, yes, this is the origin of Bowser. Apparently, this was the comic that lit the internet on fire. This is not. A I'm just so. Yeah, I, I'm is... just so confused. Wait, sorry, sorry. Can we go back to Peach rejected Mario? Well, okay. Technically speaking, they try. I mean, they played it off as a joke, mind you. This wasn't anything like big or significant. It's like they were. Tr about to hint at it, but then it just turned into a comedy. It's like, you know, Bowser, you know, even though you've got beat it, he's still gonna keep trying anyway. And then it's like, you know, Peach didn't want to put up with it anymore and was like, no, nope, no, nope, let, let's just go back to work. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay. But, yeah, again, if all you right, see so... the end of Odyssey, you know exactly what I'm talking about, but no, that's the origin of Bowser at this comic. And ever since the comic came out, a lot of people have been going crazy with it because you know, yeah, it started off with Bowser now dressed up as Bowser Peach. Yeah. And then from there, then we have the Boo who wears the crown, and then Boo-ed. for some reason we have the Chain Chomp that wears the crown. The Bullet and it's Bill. Like, why are we making silk? Well, we haven't gotten to that point yet. Okay. But well, no, yeah, Davy, no, Davy in the like, chat is we... saying that he's seen Bullet Rider or like Bullet Bill stuff on the tumblers. God, do I even want to dare look that up? Do it right now. Bullet billet. Yeah. Bullet bill. Bullet bill bounce. <laughs> okay. What? Um. What? All right. Ha. So yeah, past that. The, it, it, Mike, you you brought up the point to me the other night that was just like it's kind of like the Bowsette kind of reminds you of Toru from uh, Dragon Maid. Yeah, no, you were looking up for ideas for, like, you know, stuff to write on. And I was just thinking about, like, I mean, right now, because, you know, last year, uh, yeah. Miss Kobayashi's Pet Dragon was, like, really lit up. And it's like, yeah, it's a joke that has, like, those sexual jokes here and there. But it's like, at the same time, though, it's like, this is still a rather charming show, and I don't know why. Yeah. But what? then at the same time, I mean, but then well, I haven't been able to find it, so feel free to post it, but... Um, what I was going to say, though, was that, you know, I really like this show. This is, has a lot of nice charm to it. And then at the same time, you know, yeah, it, technically you do have the little bit of element of what the true form is with the horns and the shell or tails in this case. Yeah. And anything else. And then it's like, wait a second. Bowsette is literally Toru in some regards. Yeah, so it's like... literally the Mario's... Co I mean, yeah, Mario's pet princess or something i don't know right how you would put it, but mr mario's no. dragon maid over here but you we also brought up or it's like we came to the conclusion in the chat also that it was like the shell is like completely missing from bowsette i mean mind you that's um at the same time some of the fan arts do go ahead and put the shell on them oh okay because like i posted before that you know that comic you actually can see the shell on the back <laughs> oh, i was so look, i was gonna it's kind of hidden away but technically speaking the the shell is back there, but you know, for uh, most people, yeah, they're not gonna bother with that detail. Yeah, fair enough. They uh, want to see, you know, Bowsette stacked, essentially, for lack of a better way to put it. Yeah. All right, Davy. Davy in the chat uh, says Rule Thirty Four <laughs> is having a field day. I'm sure they are. I am sure. Oh, oh please. Yeah. They're not having a field day. They are having a like two week cruise with this. <laughs> anyway, uh, guys. guys. Yeah. yeah I, I was I was gonna joke that um maybe Bows is coming out of his shell. <laughs> uh... <laughs> I'm sorry, sorry. Anyway, um, I actually had no idea about any of this. All I saw was the character design, and I just immediately assumed that it was going to be a new villain. Uh, uh. Oh, okay. 
And no, I, I, was, I was thinking, oh, okay, so it's going to be like a female female version of Bowser. I'm like, is this going to be like, uh, story-wise, is she going to be jealous of Peach and then like go after her and then so Mario has to fight her or something like that? And I thought, okay, that that could be a pretty like interesting take on a that Mario would, villain. That would honestly be the best. And you tell me all of this and I'm like, Oh, well, Why? this isn't it. That would honest, <laughs> yeah. honestly be the best case scenario for all this, to be quite honest. Yeah, but here's the real kicker. Here's the thing that really made me laugh the most. Yeah. Because, ironically enough, this also came up in the news as well. Because, you know, technically speaking, Nintendo's being asked about this, and of course they're saying, no comment. Can't blame them, right? Right. But technically speaking, that um, for the Bowsette, that there was actually concept art for Mario Odyssey, and I did post that in our chat too. Yeah. Technically speaking, they were actually playing with the idea that at one time Bowser was just going to go ahead and possess Peach. Yeah. Yeah. With okay. his own and version of like, Cappy. Yes, That's... exactly. And in this sense, it's like, okay, well, technically speaking, Nintendo did come up with the idea of Bowsette in some regards, but they, of course, never made it happen because, Damn, you know, I don't know how you would do that, but. Right, and that know, little. Maybe when we get Super Mario Odyssey 2. Maybe this will be a plot for it. Yeah, knows? and that like comment or that little picture from like the book that that's from <laughs> is from an art book that was released in Japan like a day ago. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, yeah, Bowser's been sweeping the internet, but then ironically enough, Nintendo did go ahead and have their thing, and you know, had the comic not posted when it did. Yeah, this could have been the picture that was flooding the internet rather than the one that we got from the comic. For all we know, yeah. is the next Mario Party game going to be crazy? Yeah, probably. I know, I'm kind of hoping they have a Bowsette like character now to play as. Well, again, it's, it's up to Nintendo because, yeah. you know, technically speaking, you know, there's another Mario character that they haven't touched. Do you know what his name is? I'll give you a hint. It's the character that caused me to cuss on the show previously when I was on. <laughs> Waluigi? Uh... Yeah, I mean, think about it like this. That, you know, the whole thing for Waluigi not being in Smash. Technically speaking, Waluigi has not been in the main Mario game. The closest he's gotten has either been through sports games, the dancing game, or otherwise, you know, random cameos here and there. But he's never been in a main Mario game. So, you know, technically speaking, I would look at it the same way as Bowsette in some regards. That, you know, unless if Nintendo wants to surprise us and actually make it a thing officially, but, you know, I would find it funny if we would see Bowsette before we would with, see Waluigi. That would be like another thing. Yeah. With the way it's blowing up, though, I don't think they will go that direction. I think that if it didn't blow up, it could have been a potential, like, good idea, but with the whole... This is know, basically... Or, oh, oh, sorry, I'm <laughs> uh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you go first. You go. Well, no, what I was going to say is that, technically speaking, the whole thing that's happened with Bowsette and turning random Mario characters into... Princess Peach like characters. This is literally as close to OC Sonic that we're gonna be getting to. Oh like, god. Like, even then, oh like, god. Think about it. This is the one thing that everyone on the internet I think oh. wants to avoid. Yeah. We do Wait, not want Bowser to evolve me. into Sonic OC. Say it with me now. Let us not go down that path, my children. <laughs> <laughs> let us not go down that path, my children. I'm gonna let not let this conversation continue oh, even oh. further. Okay. This shall not pass, God. Waluigi is in Mario Kart. Yes, he is. Actually. Yes, yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. And, okay, anyway. Yeah, well, again, sports games. Yeah. I put down Mario Kart as a sports game. It's okay. Technically. Okay. That's fair. All right. So, anyway, I think unless someone else has absolutely anything else they would want to add, that, that can do it. I just it dropped the sh- mic on that. You can't continue after that. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. So, all right. Joel, where can the good people find you on the internet? All right. Uh, you can find me... Of, of course, some culture of gaming under Joe Yep, or you can find uh, my writings under HK Glenstead. That's capital H, capital K, capital G, L E N S T I D. I'm on fan fiction, archive of our own, and Wattpad. And I recently created a Tumblr, which has both my articles and my writings. And I haven't uploaded my drawings yet, but I've been doing a couple drawings, seeing like have you guys seen my drawings? I, I posted them on the Discord sometime back. Yes, I might have. I haven't okay. had the chance to, but definitely I'll probably hit you up to check them out after we're done here. Okay, and so um, they, uh, uh, you can find me on my Tumblr. It's also HK Glenstead, so if you can't be bothered, you know, searching up the separate ones, just go to the Tumblr. I have my links there. 
All right. Yeah. Awesome. Mike, how about yourself? Okay. Well, really fast, I guess that uh, for my call name, I'm MASA705. You can go ahead and find me at various uh, locations, if you will. I'm still trying to make the arrangements to set up my own personal blog of Mad Moss Gaming. Okay. And I'm hoping that if I could be able to get that off, I could be able to go ahead to, you know, obviously, once I get that off the ground, I'm still going to be running with Culture of Gaming, but, you know, just to have something personal for myself. Yeah. But, um, alongside with that, though, you know, I do have a YouTube, I do have a Twitter with same name, MASA705, and I do want to go ahead and try to be doing more stuff, but right now, like I said at the very top of the show, time restraints kind of screws me over in some regards. Yeah. And I would like to go ahead to try to better manage my time. But until I do, I'm kind of just spinning my wheels at the moment. But no, I'm on the cultural gaming. If there's anything that you guys would ever like me to try to write about or cover or what have you, feel free to shoot the I and shoot, shoot your ideas over and I'll be more than happy to try to take a crack at a few ideas. All right. Awesome. Uh, you can find me, the only social media that I ever post on, is uh, my Twitter, at InfuriousElicon. And then, of course, you can look for my weekly tech and anime articles on COG. So, anyway, that about does it. Uh, thank you to my guests for coming on to the show here, and thank you to our audience for tuning in. Be sure to tune in next week. Same great time, same great place, and we'll see you all then. Thank you very much.